freaking killing me after submitting all those papers you guys did online on teams and all of them were sideways it was getting really hard to read so please from now on adjust your homework assignments so that they're straight up and down so i can read them without having to tilt my head all right guys so let's continue on so what are we going to be talking about today so today's lesson is going to be specifically on drawing two-dimensional molecular models right in other words lewis dot structures so this is actually the second part of you guys or the third part of you guys is explore one activity uh, what can be made. And it specifically deals with drawn Lewis dot structures for covalently bonded molecules, such as water, methane, ethane, those kinds of things. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first molecule we're going to look at is nitrogen gas, N2, all right? Nitrogen gas is two nitrogen atoms bonded to one another uh, covalently, all right? Now, any single time you do any one of these problems, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, like everything else, how many valence electrons does nitrogen have? So when, if I look at my periodic table, I know that nitrogen is located in group 5A, right, or group 15. Um, since it's located in group 5A, I know that it has five valence electrons. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a Lewis dot structure for nitrogen. So there's nitrogen. And I'm going to draw the five valence electrons that are associated with it. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if you look at this little design that I got here, right, this, this Lewis dot structure, you'll notice that three of these electrons are unpaired. Those three unpaired electrons let us know how many covalent bonds a nitrogen atom can make. According to my diagram, it can make up to three covalent bonds. In other words, it can make a triple bond, a single bond, and a double bond if it needs to. All right? Okay, so in this example, we have two nitrogens. Now, nitrogens we have two of them, right, are going to be in the same exact situation here, right? They're both going to have the five valence electrons. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to draw nitrogens right next to each other before I even draw my, my Lewis dot structures, right? And since I know it can make a triple bond, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a bond. Let me draw that again one more time. Didn't like the way that looked. First, I'm going to draw all my valence electrons, but I'm going to orientate them in a way, right, that allows me to make my bond, okay? So I'm going to do two valence electrons over here, one, two, and the same thing over here. Those are going to be my lone pairs of electrons that aren't used as a bond. We call them unbonded electrons, okay? And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my three electrons that are going to be used in this bond. So we have one, let me draw these green, one, two, Three, one, two, three. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one single bond between my nitrogen atoms. Okay, now, if I think that I'm done, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through this, and I'm actually going to count the number of electrons, right, number of electrons that my nitrogen atoms have, right? In other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see if my nitrogen has a satisfied for a full outer shell if it has its octet complete. Okay, so let's count them up. So for this nitrogen atom, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. It only has six electrons now, right? It has not completed its outer shell. So I can still make, or I can still take two more electrons. So I can take one from here and share this one, and I can share this one right here. So let's, let's do that right now. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna bond here, one, and then another one right here, just like that, okay? Now let's count up for each one of these atoms how many electrons are associated with it. Ready? One, two, three. I'm going to do this actually with a different color. Let me try this with a laser pointer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this nitrogen has its octet full. What about this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It also has a full outer shell. So it is satisfied, right? It is, um, has a complete uh, full octet. 
Now, I know some of you guys are saying, well, Mr. Dominguez, you counted these as like two. Well, that's right. Each one of these bonds, because it, the bond represents a shared pair of electrons. Remember, we're talking again about covalent bonds, right? So since we're talking about a shared pair of electrons. Each one of these lines represents two electrons. Two, four, six, seven, eight. We have an octet complete. So this is the molecular Lewis dot structure for nitrogen gas. Notice how over here we have these two lone pair of electrons. You have to include any lone pair of electrons that you might have. In other words, electrons that aren't used in the bond. Okay? All right, so that's the first example. So let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> okay, so the next atom or the next molecule I'm going to make is uh, it's an organic molecule. Uh, it's one um, that you guys are probably familiar with. It's methane. It's actually the gas and gaseous form that you guys smell when you guys fart. All right, so it's something that you <laughs> maybe you've had some experience, some, some more than others, right? Um, so our first molecule here is methane. Now, some of you guys are like, well, how do you remember that? Well, because I've seen it lots of times, and I know a little simple rule, right? When it comes to the first four organic molecules, right, methane, ethane, propane, and butane, right, I look at the number of carbons each one has, or rather, I know the name, so then I know how many carbons it has. So I use Mary eats peanut butter. Methane, ethane, propane, and butane. Mary has one carbon, uh, eats has two, right, uh, peanut butter has three, and then uh, butter has four, right? Et methane, ethane, propane, and butane, right? This is a simple thing that I just never forgot. So this first molecule is methane. The second molecule over here is uh, two of them, right? So eats, which is ethane, right? So Mary eats. Okay, let's do the first one. So anytime I do a Lewis dot structure, just like I was telling you guys before, one of the first things I do is I ask myself, how many valence electrons does the atom have, right? In this case, carbon, which is gonna be my central atom, the one that I'm gonna draw in the middle, right, has four valence electrons, which means it has four, it needs four more electrons to complete its full outer shell. Now, if you guys have been following along, you realize that what that actually means is that carbon can actually make four bonds, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw carbon, because that's going to be my central atom. I'm going to draw this a different color. Green's kind of blah. I'll draw purple or blue. So I have carbon, Right? And carbon has four valence electrons. So I could draw a Lewis dot structure, or better yet, because I kind of know what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to draw, actually, I still don't like where it's at. I'm going to put it more in the middle. There we go, right here. That's better. Right? And I know that it has four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. Okay? Now, in this molecule, if I read it, it has four hydrogens. Okay? Now, what do we know about hydrogens? Well, first and foremost, they're located in group 1A, right? So we know that they have one valence electron. Now, you have to remember that hydrogen only has an S orbital. So the maximum number of electrons that it can fit on its orbital is two. So hydrogen doesn't complete, doesn't actually make an octet, but rather forms a duet, right? Two electrons, okay? So I know in order for hydrogen to have complete outer shell, it needs two electrons. Therefore, if it only has one valence electron, it needs how many electrons to complete its outer shell? needs one more electron. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw hydrogens all the way around this, car this, this, this carbon. Mr. Carbon, we have you surrounded. Right there, right there, and right there. <clears throat> I'm gonna draw another, the one valence electron for each of these carbons. And now that I have that, remember that if we're making covalent bonds, it's all about sharing electrons. So each one of these is going to form single bonds to each one of these hydrogens. Now, once again, we ask ourselves the question, is our atom satisfied? Has it completed its octet? Well, let's count all the atoms for this carbon molecule. No, this carbon atom, sorry. All the, I keep saying it wrong, all the electrons for this carbon atom. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. So is carbon satisfied? Does it have a full outer shell? The answer is yes. Now, what about each one of these hydrogens? Are they satisfied? Do they have a full octet or a full, sorry, not full octet, a full duet or a full outer shell? So remember, hydrogen can have two. So one, two, that one's good. One, two, this one's good. One, two, that one's good. One, two, that one's good as well. Now, I know right now it seems really simplistic that I'm doing this and kind of obvious, but the truth of the matter is sometimes these molecules get much bigger and much more complicated to do. Okay? So let me erase this one. Now that we're done with methane, 
let's do the next one, all right? C2H6. Now, if you remember the common name for this, right? If this one's methane and this has two carbon, what comes after it? Mary E. So what's E stand for? Ethane, very good, all right? So if I have ethane, first thing I'm always gonna do, if I ever have carbons, I'm always gonna make them my central atoms, all right, in the molecule, just because I know they can make four bonds, all right? So I'm gonna put carbon right in the middle of this, put one carbon here, put another carbon over here. All right, now, how many hydrogens do we have in this example? We have six of them, okay? In this example, will we ever bond hydrogens to each other? The answer is no. And the reason that you wouldn't bond hydrogens to each other, because if you remember correctly, right, hydrogen only needs two electrons to complete its outer shell. So if you bond a hydrogen to a hydrogen, right, that hydrogen is going to be all by itself as hydrogen gas or something like that, which wouldn't be correct for this molecule. So I know for a fact, right, that hydrogen has to be around the, the carbon, right? So it's going to make its own bond. I'll put a hydrogen here. I'm going to put another hydrogen here. I'm going to put another hydrogen here. One right here, one right here, and one right here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one bond. Now remember, oh, first of all, I'm going to draw all my valence electrons. I know carbon has four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Each one of these hydrogens only has one. So one, 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 and one all the way around. All right. Now all I'm going to do is going to connect the dots. Take my highlighter here, make this purple so you can see. I'm going to combine this one right here, combine that one right there, and this one right here. Now let's stop right there. Let's look at this carbon right here and let's see if it has completed its outer shell yet. It's full, uh, it's full outer shell with eight electrons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. So we can still make one more bond. So guess what that bond's gonna go between? Between this carbon and this other carbon, combining the two molecules like that. Now there's eight, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing to this side, right here, right here, and right here. Okay, now we have our completed met or SA molecule. Okay, and each one of these carbons, right, has a complete outer shell. We can even check. So we got, let me get my laser pointer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can tell that each one of these hydrogens has a complete duet because they're only making, each one is only making one bond. An easy way to do this is just look at the amount of bonds the carbon has. If it has four, then it has a complete outer shell. Okay? All right. So good job overall. Not too bad. Let's go to the next one. Now, sometimes you're going to know something like this, right? Now, you haven't been taught, uh, you know, how to name double bonds and triple bonds. Um, just know that they're named a little bit differently. For example, this, this molecule right here, C2H4, is not ethane, right? But in fact, it's ethylene, right? Well, the reason I call it ethylene is that last part, E, lets me know that in this molecule, there's actually a double bond somewhere in there, okay? And you'll be able to tell that just by when you start drawing the molecule. When I first learned about double and triple bonds when I was in high school, right, the way I kind of like stumbled upon uh, doubles and triple bonds is when I started making these little dot structures. I was like, hey, wait a minute. There's not enough hydrogen, so where do I put this extra bond? And I kind of just realized, oh, it goes between these two high carbons. Spoiler alert, okay? So let's do that right now. Let's make our first one. So once again, I'm gonna draw my central atoms, which in this case are gonna be carbon. I always just do that. And remember, how many bonds can carbon make? It can make four bonds. Why? Because it has four valence electrons, four valence electrons, right? So it can make four bonds. It needs four more to complete its outer shell. So I'll draw carbon here, and I'm going to draw carbon over here, okay? Now, I'm going to draw my four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, how many hydrogens do we have with this molecule? Well, according to this, we have four, okay? So I'm not going to draw the hydrogens right next to each other. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hydrogen over here. I'm going to put a hydrogen over here. I'm going to put a hydrogen over here. And I'm going to put, oh, it disappeared. And I'm going to put a, oh, that's way too close. Both of these are way too close. Put it way down here. I'm not used to working with this much space. And a hydrogen right there. And all of these have one valence electron. 
All right, so we have our four hydrogens and our two carbons. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start connecting the dots. All righty. So I'm going to take my highlighter, do purple, connect it right here, one right there, one right there, one right there, and one right there. But wait a minute. Time out. Hold up, Mr. Dominguez. I know for a fact that both of these carbons right here are not, have not completed their full outer shell. Do not have a full outer shell. Well, how do we know that? Well, they've only made three bonds. And on top of that, there's this lone electron on this other side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this electron and I'm going to move it, orientate it over here to the front. Just like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make one more bond between these two carbons, like so. And now we have our ethylene molecule with one double bond between the two carbons. Now, a more accurate way to draw this um, due to repulsion and attraction forces between the hydrogens and the carbons, you'll learn about that later on, right? So, and actually a better way to draw it would to be to do this. Let me show you. Take that off. I took everything off, didn't I? Erase this. And I'm going to put, well, first of all, I'll draw my carbon back. I'm going to put my hydrogens over here off to the side, just like that. Leaving there enough space between the two hydrogens, just like that. And there we go. There is our ethylene molecule, just like that. Um, and that's pretty much all there is when you're drawing Lewis dot structures. Now, like I said before, it's really about knowing how many valence electrons each of the atoms in the molecule has. It's all about completing that outer shell, that full outer shell, completing that octet, or in the case of hydrogen, completing that duet, right? Count the number of electrons that you have, count the number of bonds that you're making.